What is up, world? Welcome to Apocalypse Movies. This is the casting table where we choose our favorite characters and tell you which actors or actresses we want to play them. I am Jacob Bartley, and I am joined via StreamYard by Brian Avalasino and Jake Berlin. What is up, guys? I feel Hello. very weird. I haven't been on a, a casting table in a long time. That is yeah, very yeah. true. You're a hot commodity. We can't ever get you on this one. <laughs> I know. Well, it's it's typically, I, I mean, I love the show. I, I think it's such a brilliant idea. And in, in the space with internet today, it's like, it's it's obvious. Everyone does it all the time. You know, Boss Logic and stuff, they do it all the time. Um, but I, I like to be on on the characters that like are super cool and super different. The ones you really like. <laughs> the ones I really like, yeah. And so, you know, I coordinate it that way. Yeah, and Remember, this is the first time we've done sh this show via Skype or anything yes, like that. We've you know, always done it in person. So, <laughs> are we yeah, ever they, gonna like, do a casting table where you're, if it's Star Wars, you're not gonna be on it? Nah. <laughs> yeah, I I'm, no, I'm sure. No, there will be there will be one. I'll, yeah, I'll, I like Keith and Gio to be on there because they they give such different opinions. But it's like like I said in the chat, you know, I put a I put the idea of like who wants to do Dark Side, who wants to do Namor. You two said Namor, the other two did Dark Side. I was like. All right, I'll do both of them. Did Keith choose Dark Side? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You yeah, might as well do both because yeah. honestly, I don't know anything about Dark Side. Well, I the, thing, the thing with Dark Side is literally anybody could play him. It's, it'll it, be the voice. It's going to be probably like a motion cast yeah. role or a straight CGI thing. So, yeah. So that this will be one, next guys, nice little plug. That yeah. one next. This oh, one's dude, much more it's interesting. Not revealing our secret. <laughs> yeah. So typically, we try to choose characters that are realistically maybe on the way sometime soon. Not necessarily like some wild character that we'll never see. It, it When it feels almost like Squirrel like, Girl. We'll never it, see Squirrel Girl. Uh, We almost did. We almost did. You're right. Yeah. We almost I did. don't think we'll see her live action in a film, but who knows? You never know, though. You yeah, <laughs> never right. know with Marvel. But, I mean, but we you're never, right. We, we never we'll thought we would name, see Groot and Rocket. We'll see Name Howard the Duck. Before. Yeah, Howard. Yeah, even more Howard the Duck. <laughs> we'll see Namor way before. That would be a great voice girl. to cast. <laughs> Howard the Duck. They already have him. That doesn't mean they can't cast someone else. It's isn't it Seth Rogen or Seth Green? No, One of I don't them. Think so. I don't think it's. So. I'm pretty sure it's Seth Green. I think it is Seth Green, but I'm not 100 positive. It's not Seth Rogen for sure. Not anyway. Seth we're here for Namor, guys. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Namor, the Submariner. Yes. He is, for lack of a better way of explaining it, he's Marvel's Aquaman. But there's so much more to it than that. And just because he's not the most well-known character in the world, uh, I'm going to shoot it to Jake to give us a quick description of the character. Maybe some comic book history. That way, those who aren't familiar with him have a little bit more information. Yeah. So uh, history. He is, um, in the description, he's actually described as the mutant son of human sea captain and princess of the myth mythical undersea kingdom of Atlantis. Yes. He possesses the super strength and aquatic abilities of the homos uh, mermanis race, as well as the mutant ability of fight along with superhuman powers. Um, he, pr he debuted a long time ago. Um, he's been involved with a lot of different things. And the cool thing here is why we're basically casting him is because for the longest time, a lot of fans, including us, we think that more than likely he'll probably show up in Black Panther 2 is when the the next property he could show up in. <laughs> that is because Atlantis and Wakanda go at war on point. But the biggest key here is that as as he was brought up, he was actually brought up to hate humanity. Um, yes. So he has a he well, anyway, he had a um a rival with humanity and that eventually flipped and he started to um be friendly with them. He put in an order with Atlantis saying no war with humanity. Um, he was the founder of the defenders. He was a part of um, a part of the Illuminati at one point, which is the highest honor in Marvel comics. You know, Dr. Strange, Black Bolt, uh, uh, Mr. Fantastic, Tony Stark, uh, an incredible, uh, th like the most intelligent beings on the planet. And so um, even though he's not popular, like a Captain America or even like a human torch or someone, um, he's always been with them in battles and to comic book fans. He's one of the most popular Marvel characters and one that people have been wanting for a very, very long time. It's funny. You mentioned though, those two characters, cause they were in the invaders together. And yes, you are correct. I thought if there's a few ways you could introduce him, I thought an invaders movie would have been a really It'd cool be way. Genius. Because be genius. Who know, hey, they didn't show us all of captain America's missions back when mm -hmm. he was 
doing his thing. And maybe yeah. he went off every once in a while and teamed up with these three other superheroes and did some missions. I think that would be so cool. Well, and we don't know how old he is, like how or how he ages. He could be aging very differently depending on his mutant ability, and he could have very well fought in World War II with the invaders. Well, that's what I'm saying. He could have been looked the same during World War II and still and come how, back in, how in modern cool day. Of a backstory would that be? That would be, that would be so amazing. Cool. It'd be like a it's like a Wolverine esque backstory, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I think it was. It was the original Human Torch who was like a robot or something. Yeah. And then it was Cap. And I for, there was another character involved. I forget. But they with Namor, they were the invaders, which mm -hmm. I remember seeing covers of those in the comic book store, which is pretty cool. Well, he's he's one of Marvel's oldest characters. He's been around since almost, well, 1939, but 1940 yeah. almost. So he's a old character. And I like him because he's kind of an anti-hero in a way he he's he going to him yes he's going to protect atlantis first and then oh yeah anything else that he cares about so the invaders were cap bucky human torch sub uh namor and he was called submariner at the time that's where the name yeah. came from. he wasn't called namor um and then a character named toro Oh, okay. Yeah. I do remember seeing Bucky on that cover too. Yes. Like very small running next to Yeah, next he was to all a sidekick them. at that time. He wasn't exactly. an actual Bucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's so many different things you can do with this character, especially bringing him into modern day. And I love that you mentioned about Atlantis, Brian, because it's funny because he could say humanity's destroying or uh, Atlantis or the ocean, just kind of like they did in Aquaman. Or if if the earth is a is at threat, if the earth is in danger. Atlantis is part of Earth, so yep. he has to team up with yep. them to save Earth sometimes. And I remember uh, reading the Civil War II storyline, and that was my first time ever reading anything with Namor. And when he showed up, I was like, damn, this dude, first of all, he's a straight a-hole. And <laughs> that's he, how he is. He's very powerful. <laughs> very powerful. He's yeah, kind so of a uh, one of the main antagonist if you will whenever the illuminati is around he yeah, tends well, like you to said not... he's an anti-hero he's not always yeah. a good guy just yeah. imagine seeing wakanda versus atlantis black panther versus namor on screen yeah, i'll pass it out are you kidding me <laughs> like how how amazing would that be has black, black panther, black panther like, suit go underwater and i mean you look you got sure sure you, you got sherry <laughs> on your side you could do anything oh i bet that they could and probably I, make underwater black panther and suit. then sherry makes namor no pass suit Oh, Ooh. we'll see. We'll see. But first, we got to cast them, right? Yes. yes so, yes. uh, so let's do this, Jake. I feel like you never get to go first on these. So okay, let's go enough. ahead and go to fair you. Enough. We'll go, Jake, Brian, me. I won't take yours, Brian. I promise that you're not. I'm not going to take yours. You know what's funny? Me. Nobody will take mine. I think I know what Brian's is. And yes, I'm, I think I know I'm not going to take his on purpose. <laughs> if, we'll, see. we'll see. If mine gets picked, yours is for me. It's not gonna I'm be mine. getting off of this. I've had this in my phone for like two months. You're gonna reach I through the computer I'm and grab one. I'm pretty sure, <laughs> I'm pretty sure yours is an honorable mention for mine. Nobody, nobody will have mine. I guarantee that. Okay, it's someone from so, like. Um, so we go yeah. because, I, because, I, because, I, because I haven't been on here in a while. Is we go one then two or two then one? We go one. One. Yeah. Just right, so, so, just in case somebody's hopefully someone's number two isn't your one, and you say it first, you know. Okay, so, yeah. so my my first yeah, yeah. choice. My first choice is a gentleman that I've caught on with the last year. Um, he is, in my opinion, an incredibly talented action hero. He had a cameo in Deadpool 2. He led a great AMC show that a lot of people know about. And he was recently in a Kung Fu show on Netflix. Um, and he's the star of the upcoming Mortal Kombat film. And that is Louis Tan. Um, Louis Tan is playing an undisclosed role in Mortal Kombat, which a lot of people may think is is Johnny Cage a character? Is that his name? Yeah, and they haven't announced who's playing Johnny Cage. A lot Cage of people yet. think he's gonna be playing Johnny Cage. Oh um, but he is wow. the co-lead in know Louis that. <laughs> Um he played Shatterstar in Deadpool 2, and he led into the Badlands on AMC. Um he's in Denethys, he was in Iron Fist for an episode two. Uh, he's done a lot of TV work, but he's actually the son of a uh, a stunt actor who was in Kung Fu. They grew up in... in I was going to say, he must know martial arts. Yes. Or he's um, definitely playing Johnny Cage. <laughs> yes. And so, and I, I think that uh, in Wu Assassins, he was he was incredible. I never saw Into the Badlands, um, 
but I just think the guy is so talented. Um, he's, he's younger, so he so he can play the he can play the role for a while. Um, and he kind of has that look that's like I'm an anti hero. I don't want to be the hero. I'm an anti hero. Um, I just think that, and he was in Deadpool too, so he knows the comic book realm a little bit as well. Um, and maybe who knows? I mean, maybe they they saw that he got cast in Mortal Kombat and they saw something and they're like, hey, we want that guy for for Namor. That's a really good choice, to be honest. I only know him as Shatterstar, mm -hmm. and he was hilarious in that. <laughs> yeah. I loved him in that. Yeah. He, he was so cocky and arrogant, yeah. and then what ha ends up happening to all those characters is just hilarious. And I, I love that because he's, we talk about it all the time, he's so like an unrecognizable face mm -hmm. that we will just know him as Namor from that yes, point on. Exactly. And I, that's a great choice. I think he's ready to take on a role like this. He's, he's so humble. I've seen in a couple of interviews with him. He's just, he just wants like the chance to like prove himself in a big movie like this. And I feel like if he does play mortal or uh, Johnny Cage in mortal Kombat, and James Wan's the executive producer of that movie, I have no doubt people are gonna be like, <laughs> we want that guy for this role. Yeah. It would be kind of ironic that, he Aquaman director, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that yeah I didn't even think about that. Good call. That's that's good. That's good. Give him some pointers on being an underwater superhero. Yeah, I, who knows? That's actually not a good. Not, that's even adds more to, more questions to it. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, I, I really do like oh. that because the way he plays it in Deadpool, his character, he's a good guy, I guess, but he's so arrogant, and mm -hmm. that's exactly how you want Namor to be. Yes. So yes, Brian, let's go to you, man. Who is your number one choice? Hold on. Actually, I'm going to go first. I'm going to no, I'm just <laughs> I'll, I'll <laughs> yell mine out right now. <laughs> All right. No, what is your choice? All right. So I've been sitting on this person. Nothing has come close to changing my mind, and that is going to be uh, Henry Golding. Yeah. Jake, yeah. you already knew that? I knew it. I knew yeah. it, too. I don't know how I just felt I'm, it. I'm pretty sure I've said it multiple times just because <laughs> sure, I, I never... I remember you saying it, yeah. Just because I feel like at some point I felt like we were never going to even get to this character, but uh, yeah, he's, he is perfect for this role. I, he can beef up. Uh, he already is pretty, pretty decent size, but if you got, if you want to like freaking shred him, then he's probably easily there for it. Um, kind of looks like Namor. And I think that he would be freaking awesome as because that's a name people know i could totally see him being someone that could lead whatever if they decided to take a namor type franchise like he could totally be someone that does that uh throw some awesome uh co-stars and you're golden and he's so versatile in his acting from uh crazy rich asians to the gentleman yes he he was fan fantastic in both of them. And so I, I nothing will ever convince me otherwise that this guy <laughs> should not be Namor. So you, you said something that, uh, that he's, he's a well-known name and we've seen Marvel before. He's the hot commodity right now. Like came up just recently, start off crazy rich Asians. Then he started alongside two incredible actresses in a simple favor. And then, yes. and then he did, uh, the gentleman, um, and we've seen Marvel quickly snatch up up and comers who are now mm -hmm. hot commodity names in the business for big roles. Um, he, he fits it. He really does. Like he's, he, he's the name brand that you want to lead a franchise. The only thing I will say is that the only thing that could stop that is he's currently starring as snake eyes. And if that's a hit, that could be, that could be, it could be in the way as him leading a Marvel property. Yeah. That could, I could see that too, but and he already just, well he beefed up for Snake Eyes too, so there's your answer for that. I could literally just see him going toe to toe with Chadwick Boseman in like some war ish, like oh my god, it's perfect. <laughs> That's the perfect casting. I mean, I I have him on my honorable mentions list. It's it's hard not to because it's just it fits so well. And again, the character he plays in the gentleman just uh, that guy's so a good. straight He's scumbag, an but mm -hmm. but that kind of fits in a way. Uh, so I, I think, and I think he's just on the brink of, he is a recognizable face, but he's not super, he's not super famous yet. He's, yeah. he's the guy from crazy rich Asians. He's not Henry Golding yet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think he's very close though. He, yes. Snake eyes could put him over that, but I still think snake eyes is just small enough to where it's not yet. 
uh, it, it kind of goes something kind of big and then Marvel sometimes, or it goes completely unknown mm -hmm. into Marvel. So it really just depends. I think there's no, you know, one way to do it for them. They could, they can grab a mega star. They can grab somebody who was an age, like somebody who used to be a star like Robert Downey Jr. So yeah. it, they can go many different ways with it. And I, I would not be surprised if Kevin Feige has spoke to him and his representative. It, this this is very similar to if they they swapped up uh, John Krasinski for Mister Fantastic. If they swapped up Henry Golding for Namor, it's just like, yeah, we expected that. It would be so good. Or, or I mean, yeah. a better example is Benedict Cumberbatch for Doctor Strange. It's like, yeah, we expected that. <laughs> I mean, they could go completely random. With we could be casting someone, they could go completely random, like yeah. someone that you don't really know anything about, like they did with Shang Chi. So, I mean. Who knows? That's fair. All right. So I will go with my number one. And I've been saying this guy to myself a long for a long time. And I was I, I had no idea that other people had uh, like s speculated that he could play him because I was looking at just lists online of people who could play Namor. And he popped up on every list. And that is uh, Zachary Quinto. Nice. Uh, you guys know nice. he's uh, he plays yeah. in uh -huh. Star Trek, uh -huh. and I've been a fan of Zachary Quinto since Heroes season one. He played the big bad villain. He's in American Horror Story. He's he's been in a ton of stuff, but maybe most famously Spock in the new Star Trek movies. Yes, he has the perfect look for this, and I never thought this that he would be a good fit for it until I saw Star Trek Into Darkness and how heavy. I didn't know Spock was such a badass, first of all, because I, I don't know anything about Star Trek. So when I'm watching those movies, I'm thinking like, yeah, Captain Kirk's the one who's doing the big action scenes. Nope. It's in those movies, at least it's Spock because he's an he uh, he's an alien. Right. So he's he has Vulcan. he has ability, not abilities, but his species is just uh, his alien race is just more powerful than a regular human. <laughs> so when I saw him uh, fighting benedict cumberbatch at the end of uh star trek into darkness i was like oh my goodness he could do he'd totally do an action role and i'm pretty sure at certain times in his career he's been in really good shape so i think that he could anybody could beef up for for these roles look at what chris pratt did he i mean he lost weight and then turned it into muscle in order to play star lord so i even though he's not the obvious like hey this guy can do an action role choice i think he just would fit it very well. And I think he's a good enough actor to where he can pull it off. I will say this. Um, he is almost a perfect choice because of one reason, both Spock and Amor have elf ears. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I think that's why people put him on the list. So he, much. no, like literally Spock is Namor. Just yeah. in a Star Trek uniform. He looks I wonder like if him. he would be like, mm, damn it. I don't, I don't want to wear more ears. If <laughs> it, look, if, if that ever happened, they Marvel has to find a way to make a Star Trek joke. One Absolutely. thousand oh, percent yeah. need to make a Star Trek joke. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Somebody like, like Star Lord or something would say, yes. hey, or like if Spock. it's like black or like Shuri yeah. making a joke towards him or something. Oh like yeah. I could yeah. totally yeah. see that. That'd be, that'd be so good. No, I, he, I came across him too. Um, I, I really like him and I think he's really underrated. I don't think he gets enough credit. Yeah. Um, and I don't think he gets enough work either. He's been in some bad projects in the past. Like he was in that Hitman or Agent 47 remake that was awful. Um, and he, you know, he's he was on American Horror Story. He's he's well known for Star Trek, and I hope we see him again as Spock because his Spock is so different um from the old Spock. Um but yeah, I think he's a great choice and I he can definitely lead a movie because Star Trek's a wide ranging film. Or franchise and he and chris pine are really the leads and he really goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with chris pine in those movies absolutely and them two are like the main reason i'm seriously a star trek fan now because of those movies yeah and it ha spock is probably my favorite character of those new movies so and you have him in a starting illuminati you've got him with uh benedict cumberbatch hey that, you gonna re reunite him that would be pretty cool be that would young. be awesome. All right, Jake. Well, let's go to you, man, for your number two choice. Yeah. So I had a tough time between my two and three. They're they're really similar. They, you know, for the sake of the list, this one is two and this one's three, but they're really a two A and a two B to me. Um, but the one that I'm choosing with to go as my official number two is a gentleman named Joe Taslim. Um, and if you don't know who Joe Taslim is, that is because you have never seen the Raid movies. Um, <laughs> and he is also in uh, he is also in Fast and Furious Six. Uh, Star Trek Beyond, which we were just talking about, and 
he is playing Sub Zero in the upcoming Mortal Kombat. Oh, that is um, so cool! And so I just you're I'm just, just trying to make Jacob happy with your choices <laughs> by picking Mortal Kombat. I, I just as I was looking at his his uh, filmography here, getting ready to to announce him, I just pulled together the Mortal Kombat connection, which is cool. Um, imagine my two choices battling it out as Johnny Cage and Sub Zero. That'd be awesome. They're gonna fight um, in that movie. But yeah, so <laughs> I chose I chose Joe Taslim. Uh, for one reason, his fighting style is incredible. He's intimidating as hell. Uh, he is just a maniac. When is he the lead to... of the raid movies? No, uh, oh, Eco okay. Eco Uwes is, but he's like okay. a co lead, almost like a like a strong supporting character. I need to watch that. Um, yeah. He's an Indonesian actor, and his martial arts skills are off the freaking chain. Um, and I think he's someone that could really like benefit from a role like this and and be even if it's not namor like just like a just like a like a like a first hand role to like to namor or something like to be in the movie would be awesome uh, because he's so skilled he, he's such a good fighter and it all comes from real life stuff and i think it'd be a really cool addition to the character of namor adding like a like a real life twist on top of his comic book stuff like give him like a martial arts skill and a guy like this would definitely be able to do that yeah i i uh i don't really know much about him but uh, if he's in the raid movies and he's going to play sub zero, he's definitely uh, a fighter. And no matter what, this role is going to have you are going to have action in it and you have to be physically fit for to, to appear on camera. So I'm sure it's a great choice. Yeah. I don't, I don't know anything. I can't even <laughs> lie. Anything about him, but sounds, sounds pretty good. I'm just going to challenge all you guys to watch the raid. It's my you next should. It, where well, is I told it? you last week. It's the movie that every, I keep hearing that like once didn't, a week. It's didn't raid. I do that a while ago where I, on one of my challenges, I challenged everybody. Did I, I think I did. It that wasn't the yeah, raid. You did. You did and then we never did it. It was that Star Wars movie. It, uh, <laughs> oh, oh fanboys. Fanboys. Yeah. yeah. And we never did it. Yeah. Yeah. That's we still okay. need to do it. <laughs> yeah. I'll keep that in mind. All right, Brian, let's go to you for your number two choice. All right. So my number two choice almost seems like too awesome. So it probably <laughs> won't ever happen. To be honest, Jacob, I thought well, this I thought might that was be your, your first choice. <laughs> no, that he's perfect. This one would be awesome. This one's too uh, awesome, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I honestly thought this might be your number one choice, but it wasn't. Uh, and that is Luke Evans. I he's on my honorable mention. That's list. a good one. Yeah. He a man that is not in Give enough credit. Yes, exactly. He he's so good in everything he does and I could just see him going toe to toe with anyone in a superhero type role and him being, I could just see him sitting on a throne, like just ready to just rip whoever bugs Atlantis. Like he would be such a good, a hole, good guy. <laughs> like, he dude him ver him versus chadwick boseman would be dope too those big just big bodies and then leading an army like i could just see him just killing this role henry golding's still better but this luke evans would just be a force i feel like to be reckoned with in other things that stem further than just uh, maybe he's going up against Black Panther in one movie. I could see him going up against other bad guys. He's intimidating, and he's yes. done a villain role before. He was in Fast Six um, as the bad and guy. And <laughs> Um Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. He has a good repertoire with Disney because he not only was in the Beauty and the Beast uh, remake, but they just announced the Disney Plus series. And so yeah. he's going to be doing Disney stuff again. Um, but he also kind of played an a-hole in the Hobbit movies, too, with the town leader. Um, he kind of had a little bit of a uh, an edge to him. Um, I've always loved him. I think just like Zachary Quinto, he's kind of has this underrated value to him. He's not given enough on stuff. Um, a lot of supporting roles when the guy can lead. And so I would, I would definitely not hate if he was cast as a character. He, he yeah. looks like he can be a jerk. Yeah. Even though oh, he's yeah, probably yeah. The, one of the nicest guys probably, but <laughs> yeah. he just looks like he could be. A oh good yeah. Jerk. He can play that very well. And I, he is like the most unfamous, unrecognized leading man like he, he sh i don't know how to explain it but he should be a leading man yes. like a straight yeah, superstar yes. yep and if i ask one of my friends who doesn't watch movies as much as we do they're not gonna they're gonna be like who's luke evans and i'll be like the guy from fast six they'll be like oh him mm -hmm. so it's weird like i don't 
I don't want to say he's like the most underrated actor in the world. I just want, I just think he's like, he should be a leading man. And I think he That's is, right. but not, not as much as we would like. And this would be a good opportunity for him. I'm surprised. I'm like, isn't he in the MCU already? And I'm like, he's not. I know. And I'm exactly. surprised Marvel hasn't swapped yeah. him up yet. Yeah. Like yeah. how, I'm sure Kevin Feige has thought about him for multiple roles. Well, now that so, he has that Disney Disney connection to that's a, that's a big deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very true. And I don't know why I was thinking like, is he in the Eternals? I, but he he's not. He I, looks, I think he would be a good those, fit for one of those. He looks like just one of those people that like would be in anything. Like you can literally put him in anything, and you'd be like, oh yeah, he was in that. Like he just looks like he could fit. He's like very versatile in any role that you'd put him in. Yeah, very true. So kind of like your number two, Brian, my number two for me would be too awesome. But (laughs) my number one is like my perfect choice. And my number two is Joseph Gordon-Levitt. I love Joseph Gordon-Levitt. He is one of my favorite actors. And I like it. He is a very underrated actor, in my yeah. opinion. He's solid. He's a dual actor. actor. Yeah, he and do he a can lot. he can do a, a lot of different things as an actor. Uh, if you guys have seen The Walk, yes, uh, that that role he's really great in that movie. wasn't That movie wasn't as good as I wanted it to be, but he was really good in that movie. And I just think he's a lot of people. He, he came up as a young child actor, right? And uh, it's hard for people to see him. Some, and something outside of that but he look at all the stuff he's been i mean he's been in inception he's been in a ton of different stuff and he uh if you think oh he's too small look up pictures of him at it from don john uh mm-hmm. he's ripped in that movie and ju- and it doesn't even look like the body st- like if you if you just look from the neck down you're like that's not joseph gordon levitt and you're like and if you see it it's him so he could definitely be ripped and i think he could play it off very well and I forget uh, he was going to be something big in the comic book realm. I think it was Sandman, uh, not the Spider-Man Sandman, but the the DC. It, yes, uh, yes. He was going to be Sandman, uh, like the dream Sandman. And I don't think it worked out. He was going to direct and star. Mm-hmm. Well, you're uh, forgetting one thing, Jacob. He was Christopher Nolan's Robin. Oh, yeah. he was <laughs> <laughs> That whole thing. He, that, you're not lying. He was a character named Robin who was a cop or whatever. John but, Robin Blake. But yes, I I do I think he could pull it off, and a lot of people don't think that it would be a good fit at first. But in, in my mind, I definitely think he would, and I could totally see the elf ears on him and everything. A uh, quick quick thing, Brian, call back to Last Apocalypse. Now he's the kid lead in Angels in the Outfield. That's true. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. And Except he was on that watch, TV show. You don't watch sports movies. Uh, Married Third with Rock children. from the Sun. Yeah, no, that's Bird right. Rock from the sun. Oh, yeah, that's, Rock that's from right. Sun? That's right. Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I I like the choice. I, I he's he's another guy that you don't see much of, and you need to see more of. Um, yeah. The one role that I love from him outside of, uh, outside of a movie like Brick from Ryan Johnson is Fifty Fifty. Yes. Uh, it's he's not a great it's not that. a comic book movie or an action movie, but his acting chops are on par, um, and he's incredible. And he's just a guy that's undervalued, and it's unfortunate because he has so much talent. Yeah, and I think it's one of those situations where I feel like he doesn't work as much as he could. He, you know, he probably he's, gets offered roles and turns mm-hmm. them down. He's I know that he's a big writer and he's a big uh, short film producer because of his YouTube oh, channel okay. or his, uh, his company called Hit Record. Um, oh, wow. He does a lot I of that, that stuff for for people who are looking to get their short films out there. Hmm, that's cool. awesome. Well, yeah. I, I, it, it, if he got any big type of role, whatever it 100%, is, I would, I would 100%, be happy for yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's go through some honorable mentions, guys. Jake, who do you have as some honorable mentions? Um, so I have two. Uh, well, I had three. You guys mentioned Luke Evans already. Um, my first one is a gentleman named Daniel Henney. And the only role that people will recognize him from is he played Agent Zero in X-Men Origins. Um, Strikers. Oh, OK. Uh, um, a guy that I think proven action wise, uh, you know, one of the bright spots of that movie, Agent Zero was he's in a lot of um a lot of TV stuff like NCIS and Criminal Minds. He was the voice of Tadashi and Big Hero Six, which is awesome. <laughs> um, and I think it'd be a great choice. My second one was a Lost alumni, and that is Daniel Day Kim. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I felt like it was a good connection because Wasp is in there with Evangeline Lilly. Oh yeah, so yeah. Daniel Day Kim in there is Namor, and he's actually the one guy who's been 
Uh, he's been campaigning for the role for like eight years. Or oh, something. really? So, oh, wow. Uh, I think he'd be a really, really cool addition too. Yeah, awesome. Those those are some yep. good ones. Uh, how about you, Brian? Uh, I saw someone online post this, and the more and more like I thought about it, I was like, that'd be kind of cool. And Jake and Jacob, you're gonna get a kick out of this with Sam Witwer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would love that. He needs someone a put, he needs a big role like this for sure. Yeah. yeah. Someone put him. <laughs> yeah. Someone put him on there, and I was like, dude, I'd be down for that. Like that yeah. would be dope role for him to be i could totally wow. see him i never even thought ears. of that but that's a that'd be a good choice <laughs> right so yeah that was my my third one my other like two that. were too perfect like so yeah yeah i uh <laughs> he even though the last season of supergirl was not great he was good he was amazing yeah. on it he and he was so into it you could tell he was mm-hmm. so into it and he's another guy he's for us we know him because the schmodown and all that stuff but he is so talented and he doesn't even get the opportunities like, you know, he's but on a way lower level, you know, he, we just need yeah. him to like show up in some supporting roles in a movie. So that w- I would be so happy for him if he got he that. did. He did like a three episode stint on Riverdale this last season. After oh, really? Bro. And I was like, you give this guy only like two or three episodes. Like, what are you doing? Hey, yeah. CW is going to make him the lead of a show one of these days. They Watch, need but. to. <laughs> that would be cool. Uh, my only other choice, I had Henry Golding on my honorable mentions list, but my only other choice is uh, Alexander Skarsgård. Nice. Uh, I freaking love this guy. He, yeah, so do I. He is so talented. And look at Big Little Lies. I mean, and, and obviously, he's a monster in shape. He he played Tarzan. So Tarzan, bro. Yeah. He could totally pull pull this whole thing off and he's probably even a better choice than joseph gordon levitt but i'm just a big fan of joseph gordon levitt so i put him above him but i uh scars aka tarzan would be a freaking fantastic choice yeah I, he's he's another guy that i want to see more of i i want to see more of him he's so talented as well that whole scars family is it's ridiculous yeah. oh my goodness and i know well, uh I, his it's either his older brother or his dad. I don't know which one, but Stellan Skarsgård's Thor's bro. It's his dad. His dad. And then and I was his... going to say, if he is Namor, I want Dr. Selvig to have <laughs> yeah. a role. I want them to interact in the and movie. And then his younger brother's freaking uh, Pennywise. Pennywise like, yep. what the hell? That's a one. There's more of them, too. It's not oh, just them yeah. three. Well, uh, <laughs> the guy that played the bad guy in Green Lantern. Um, he's a Skarsgård. Yeah. Uh, I'm like, where do the all doctor. these Skarsgårds come oh, yeah. from? <laughs> What? I have him for a different role. Oh wait, the, I don't... The, the guy from Green Lantern, the Skarsgård's in the Batman. That's yeah, he's in the yeah. Batman. Isn't yeah. it Peter? Peter Skarsgård. Yeah, yeah, good call. There yeah. you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That there's that's too many. Crazy. Of them. One of those families. So with real quick, with your number one choice in mind, who? How would you want to see Namor appear in the MCU? Like, what would be the most ideal situation? Uh, we'll go to you, Brian. Going against Black Panther in verse Wakanda would be it's per it's too perfect because yeah. those two those have a history just just to make sense yeah i that, that's hard to go against but just to counter i do like the idea of doing a flashback movie like they did with the first avenger and maybe it. doing yeah. it that way but not doing it to where like maybe it's after cap freezes and the invaders like pick up what cap was doing and they do it on their own that would be a good idea that would be like cool. they lost him like maybe mm-hmm. he pops in and out of working with them and then yeah. they're like damn we just lost our our leader yeah. what do we do and they yeah. continue doing missions that that's a great time because i don't think they're going to bring chris evans in for that no, no but no, no, no. he would still have a presence in the movie mm-hmm. if they think he just died you know yeah. that's, I would I that's think, a good point I, I do think that'd be a cool flashback in if it is a black panther 2 um for a flashback sequence Oh I, yeah. If they did something where like Namor, like Ev- Chris Evans, like certain things and like throughout maybe like different times, like all of a sudden, like someone sees him and it's like, just kind of looks at him. Like that guy looks familiar. Like yeah. I've seen him before Yeah, just showing up through all these like important things just in the background. Like that would be pretty sick. You're just like, Oh my God, he was there the whole time. Just imagine if this does happen, Ryan Coogler is going to be introducing Namor. Oh, that would be it's, amazing. Yeah. Sacramento. Oh, baby. Yeah, yeah. So just to go, you know, those are the two obvious choices, but maybe I think since he's a technically a mutant, maybe you find the a way X-Men to bring way. him in with the X-Men. Mm-hmm. Maybe he's the first villain of an X-Men movie. Yeah. And for some reason he, uh, I don't know what the backstory is with him being a mutant necessarily, but you could totally tie it in some way. Maybe you bring in the mutants that way. So, so I don't, I, I don't know. Cool. 
the description might have been off a little bit, but I don't know if he's technically like a mutant because they said they said a sea captain and the he Atlantis has like the queen. Mutant. He has like the mutant gene. Got yeah, it. Yeah, he does. So it is like the same mutant. Got as it. Like got it. Got it. Got yeah. it. And it would be interesting because obviously they can change that for the movie platform, but I think I think it'd be cool if they kept that and tied it and tied it in into a way with with like oh, maybe yeah like maybe he's what if he's like the first first X Men or the first mutant and the mutants are born and bred from Atlantis. Oh, that that would actually be a great That'd way be a to total bring... twist on the mythology. Oh, wow. And I do believe there's comics where he's wearing the X-Men suit because yeah, he I, is he, a mutant. He goes through yeah. a whole bunch of different teams. He kind of leaves and picks up and leaves and picks up on a whole bunch. Because he's an a-hole. He yeah. just kind of <laughs> yeah. just jumps yeah. around. And yeah, does he, what he was he on want. the Illuminati for a little while. Then he was an invader. Then he was a defender. Well, and... it's like I said, the only thing he cares about is Atlantis. And he yeah. will... Which makes sense. He will... He will turn his back on the people he's working with, which, if which makes him a know. which makes him very, <clears throat> very different and much more interesting than an Aquaman because it isn't just like choose both worlds. Yeah. He'll choose his people over and go to war with someone like the Avengers for his people. Which yeah, is awesome. he. I mean, he's powerful enough to be an <clears throat> Avengers villain. Which yes, we could yeah. possibly see. Maybe he appears in Black Panther two and then an Avengers villain. Yeah, that'd be cool. It's definitely possible. Well. How many people do you guys think are going to say, why is Marvel copying DC and making everybody a, a, everybody. an Atlantis superhero? Yeah, everybody. there's going to be so many people that say that. that that's <laughs> why that's why I'm I'm partly believing that they will never do a standalone movie with him. I think so. I, and that makes sense. I don't know if his he's can. I don't know if a name or movie would be a hit, to be honest. It would have to be. He would have to be a raving success in like two big movies before they would go into like, even if he's a huge success in black Panther, like I feel like they would still like need to see something else to prove that like people want to see Namor. Yeah. I mean, cause at the end of the day, he's going to compete against Aquaman for that yeah. similarity title. Well, he's another God-like character. If you're not going to have Thor around with the Avengers on earth as much, maybe he kind of, picks up that role of that godlike character with the mythology and everything. So yeah, we'll see. All right. Well, that's going to do it for the casting table for Namor, the Samarin Submariner. That was one of the funnest ones we've ever done. To be honest, there yeah. was so much to talk about. That's and why I love, it went so long. <laughs> I love our choices. Uh, yes. Let us know in the comment section, what oh. you think of our choices and, Oh, I just missed it. And who you would cast as name on the Submariner. We would really love to hear your thoughts. I am Jacob Barley. Right there in the middle is Brian Avalicino, and that is Jake Berlin for Apocalypse Movies. Please subscribe, hit that like button, comment. We would really appreciate it, and we will see you on the next Casting Table.